Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something that I really wanna share with you because I don't know why it took me so long to realize this and I think that if you have not already taken this into account, you definitely should. I spent a lot of time a few years ago looking up the love languages and I was so focused on my codependent relationship that I didn't even realize that the love languages can be applied to every relationship in your life. I spent all my energy focusing on these love languages for my partner at the time rather than being like, hey, this could be applied to my friends, my family, and even better, myself. So today, besties, I want to talk to you about using the five love languages on yourself to create a stronger bond with yourself and find a deeper sense of self-love by treating yourself and nourishing yourself the way that you deserve. Who better than to take care of you than you? Mm-hmm. So if you're not familiar, the five love languages are the languages of love. <laughs> it's created by Gary Chapman, I believe, at least he's the author of the book that really defines the whole concept of it and just like goes in depth on it. To sum it up, pretty much it is how you give and receive love. So those are two different things. How you give love is how you show other people you love them, how they understand your version of love and how you receive love is how you take love in. So. What I mean by that is uh, if you're an affectionate person and someone's always giving you hugs, you're going to feel loved. But if you're an affectionate person and someone's always telling you they love them, you might be like, then show me, hug me, you know? But that all depends on your love languages. So the five love languages are quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, gift giving, and acts of service. So quality time is, of course, the time that you spend with other people. If my love language is quality time, that means I want to be with my partner, my friends, whoever, all the time. I want to spend time with them. That's how I feel love. That's how I give love, by spending time. Words of affirmation is by speaking affirmative words to tell people that you love them or show them that you love them. So if I really love you and I want to show you, I'm going to tell you I love you. I'm going to tell you you look beautiful. I'm going to tell you how confident you make me feel. I'm going to express my true thoughts to you so that you know exactly how I feel. Acts of service, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're providing some type of service or you appreciate someone else providing a service for you. So what I mean is like, oh, I'm gonna make my bed for my boyfriend today to show him that I love him because I don't want him to waste too much time in the morning doing that. Or, oh, I'm gonna make my person breakfast. Or my boyfriend is gonna pump my tires for me so that I don't have to do it. Those are acts of service. Physical touch is physical touch. You're touchy, you're feely. It doesn't only mean sex. It could be kissing, hugging, tapping my shoulder, holding me, playing with my hair, those are all physical touch. Gift giving, common sense as well. Giving and receiving gifts is how you perceive love. It doesn't have to be big extravagant gifts. It can literally be, oh, I saw this flower on the ground on the way home and I thought of you, so look at this flower, it's beautiful, it reminds me of you. And I'd be like, wow, oh my God, flower. Like, it doesn't need to be some expensive gift. It just needs to be thoughtful for the most part. I mean, depending on the person, but Usually gift giving is just the thought behind the gift. All right, so now that you know what the five love languages are, I wanna tell you guys how to use these love languages on yourself. If you feel like having a self-care day and don't really know where to start, I think this video would be good for that because if you do one out of these five things or five out of these five things, you're gonna show yourself some love and affection that you deserve and I don't see anything that could ever be wrong with that. So you may as well do it. Okay, so words of affirmation. How can you use words of affirmation in your daily routine on yourself? You're probably like, do I just have to talk to myself all day? Like, what, do I, what am I gonna do? You know, that's what I thought at first too, but I've actually been using words of affirmation on myself for a lot longer than I thought and it was unintentional. So first of all, affirmations. Looking in the mirror and telling yourself, I am that bitch. I am beautiful, I am loved, I am smart, I am kind. Using affirmative words on yourself, just speaking affirmations in the mirror is one of the best ways to use this love language on yourself. Telling yourself how amazing you are, even if it's just in your head while you're walking to the park, or even if it's just, you know, once in the mirror before you leave for work. This one is one of the easiest and most effortless ways to show love to yourself. It's really not that hard to just say some words out loud to yourself. And if you get into the habit of it, you'll start to believe it. Okay, so this next one is something that I actually do a lot. <laughs> so words of affirmation can also be written. So what I actually do is I write things on sticky notes and they're all over my room. So for example, on my sewing machine, 
I wrote the word patience on a sticky note because I am impatient and I found that all of the garments I was making came out like shit because I was rushing it because I needed wet patience. So I wrote patience on my sewing machine, on my mirror, I have you are beautiful, I have slow down because I'm, I have ADD so I do things a little too like sporadic and like crazy. Um, I have I am willing on my computer, I'm willing to do what it takes to succeed, I'm willing to do the work, you know? I have um, a vision board with affirmative words, I have um, affirmative words on my iPhone screen, I have them everywhere, like everywhere around my room there's something to look at that's telling me that basically I am that bitch, you know, or just like a little reminder of how amazing I am or what I need to do. So yeah, um, if you don't really have the time to look in the mirror and say affirmations, this is a good way because even if you don't look at them every day, um, your subconscious is registering it into your brain when you're like looking past it through the day, you know what I mean? So I think it's a really good way to use affirmative words in your day-to-day -day life. Another simple way of using words of affirmation on yourself is by simply just switching negatives to positives. There you go, effortless affirmation. If I'm constantly saying, oh my God, I'm so fat, then I'm gonna switch that to, oh my God, I love my body, or oh my God, I have the body of my dreams, or oh my God, I have a great figure. Just switch the negative to a positive. If you're constantly saying I'm broke, you could say I'm not in financial abundance because abundance brings positivity, you know? If you feel like you're insecure and you hate yourself, you're like, oh my god, I'm not feeling my best today, but tomorrow's gonna be amazing. Just switch your language. Switch any negative to a positive as much as you can. I rarely speak negatively of myself, um, like rarely. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm so dumb, and I'll be like, no, I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. <laughs> and I do that all out loud. And whoever's around me is like, mm, okay. But um, get in the habit because there's no point in speaking negatively on yourself. The negative self-talk literally does nothing for you. If you believe in the law of attraction, then you know that it actually attracts negativity. But if you don't believe in the law of attraction, and you're just like, eh, I'm a realist, just think about it. Speaking bad about yourself literally does nothing. So why? Why bother? All that energy for what, you know? All right, so we're gonna talk about quality time now. So one of my favorite ways to spend time with myself is to cook. I love cooking, it's so fun. I just love to be in the kitchen and, um, come up with a new recipe or try out a new recipe that I found online or just like make myself even a simple breakfast. Like I try to just like fully enjoy the experience. I put my music on my AirPods. I don't like to talk to anybody. I just make my food and I sing and I dance and I have fun and then I get to eat a bomb ass meal after and that's my quality time with myself. Like I really enjoy cooking because I just get to spend that time with myself. I don't like when people help me in the kitchen. My roommate usually offers to help and I barely ever say yes. The only time I say yes is when I don't feel like mincing the garlic. <laughs> but for the most part, I don't ask for help because I just like that time for myself. It's fun. Another one is to take yourself out on a solo date. That's another one of my favorite things to do. I like to just go downtown and go to a coffee shop and spend hours there. This is the way that I look at it. You can either be in your room in the dark with your curtains closed and in the same clothes that you were last night, lying around on your phone. Or you can bring a blanket to the park and lie around on your phone at the park. Or you can bring your phone to a coffee shop, get a nice coffee and lie around on your phone at the coffee shop. You're spending that time with yourself intentionally. You're not just lying at your house, just like dilly dally, willy nilly, whatever the saying is, doing nothing. You are setting the intention, I'm gonna spend a day with myself today. And you're gonna leave the house, get cute, that's what I do, I get all cute. And then I go to the park and I chill and I read and I go on my phone and I listen to music and I journal and I do all the things that I would do if I was in my room, except now I'm out with myself. And because I'm out, it also forces me to go for a walk or talk to strangers or, you know, like it forces me out. I usually take it one step further and I just go on a date with myself. I'll either take myself out somewhere to dinner for a drink or two, maybe a mochi donut. I don't know, whatever I'm feeling that day, I'll go take myself out, sit at a restaurant, order a drink. They'll be like, hi, how many? And I'll be like, just one, please. It's fun. Another great one is to hang out at the lake alone. I know that's very specific. We could just say go for a walk, but like something about the lake just gets you thinking. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's because, um, I don't know. Just go to the lake alone. It's a great time. Okay, this next one is very, very common sense. It's gift giving. I mean, give yourself a gift, treat yourself, whatever that looks like to you. It doesn't have to be expensive. Gift giving could mean you go out and you buy yourself some $5 incense because you really want it. It could mean you go buy yourself a book. It could mean you buy yourself a coffee, an ice cream, you know? 
It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm gonna go buy the new iPhone 13 tomorrow. No, you could, it could be you literally buying your favorite tea at the local coffee shop because it has loose leaf tea leaves and it's delicious and fresh and you wanna treat yourself, even though it's overpriced, you wanna treat yourself, that is gift giving. Give yourself something, anything, even if it's sour keys from the fucking dollar store, you deserve it. I mean, I don't know if you deserve it, but I'm just gonna assume you do because you watch my channel, which means you're probably a good person. Treat yourself. Acts of service. This is one of my favorite ones. Okay, so one of the like best ones is cleaning the house, cleaning your space, your room, whatever it may be. For me, when I put off cleaning the house, it makes me feel icky. And when I clean it, I feel like, whoo, I'm ready to take on the world. I'm ready to work for 12 hours straight. I'm ready to just enjoy my space. Clean your room, take those water bottles out from under your bed and on your desk and on your nightstand, take them out, throw them out. All that dusty incense that's piled up around the freaking incense holder that you still haven't cleaned, wipe that shit clean, okay? All the dust that's coming from the window because you've left your window open all summer, wipe it away. You deserve it. That is an act of service, cleaning your space. Meal prepping is another act of service. Prepare your meals in advance. Marinate your meat the night before so you have a delicious meal the next day. Cook yourself a nice meal or your friend. That might make you feel good. Organize your bookshelf. Organize your phone. Delete all those emails. Mm -hmm. Yes, those 998 emails that you have sitting, just sitting. Get a car wash. Clean your car, vacuum your car. I see those crumbs. Vacuum them. Delete all those pictures on your phone that you don't need. Cleanse your energy, that's an act of service. Get some sage and, you know, cleanse your aura. That's one of my favorite ones. Acts of service is how I give and receive love to myself and others. And lastly, we have physical touch. This can be a few different things. So for me, physical touch, I like to give myself a little scalp massage, do a deep treatment hair mask, and spend two hours in the shower. Not a bath shower i just like to sit there and put the loofah on my skin you know that physical touch scrub my scalp use an exfoliator you know skincare routines those are all physical touch hug yourself you ever hug yourself when you're sad because i do i know that sounds crazy you probably think i'm fucking lying but i actually do one of these where like i bring my knees up and i just kind of like hug and like cradle myself and it's not so much to like comfort myself it's not like oh i feel better actually it's more just like Feeling my body, I don't know. I just like to do that for some reason, some, especially when I'm crying. Um, I don't know what it does for me. I just know that it feels good to be in my body. It makes me really aware and present. So try that out. Put a nice lotion on. I like to put lavender oil on my body. Not too much, but like certain areas. Um, I also like to put a really yummy scented lotion on. You could do a face mask. You could do a, one of those exfoliant routines physical touch those ones are fun because you don't have to spend much time on them so even if you feel lazy it literally doesn't take that long unless you're me and you take two hour showers sometimes but this one is one of the easiest ones and if that's your love language you might appreciate it for yourself more than you think so those are the five love languages i hope this video helped you out let me know how you show yourself love what do you do to remind yourself of how amazing you are and to remind yourself just how much you love yourself for who you are let me know in the comments We'll chat. But I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video and for keeping up with my content. Um, if you leave a comment, like, or subscribe, it helps on my channel a lot. Comments boost the algorithm for me. It really helps me get seen by YouTube, get discovered. So if you have a comment in your mind that you just forget to type out, it would mean a lot if you typed it out. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And